All right, hello. So my name is Tristan Vitello, and I'm excited to be here to talk about some new work I have at the intersection of entrepreneurship and gender inequality. And I think it touches a little bit about uh, some of the themes that Rosabeth was talking about in her talk. Well, so first I want to acknowledge Dan Fader and Milan Miracle, my co-authors, fantastic co-authors. All right, you can always depend on your big sister. All right, so when you think about the average entrepreneur, you often think of someone who actually starts their career as what we'll call a wage or traditional employee, right? They'll work at a given firm, they'll decide that they want to become an entrepreneur, and then they'll become an entrepreneur. But what's interesting is that while we always focus on successes and we think about how entrepreneurship is about innovation and growth and all these great things, the modal entrepreneur fails. About half of small businesses, 93% of innovation-driven entrepreneurs fail. So a big question is what happens to these individuals, right? Well, usually they go back to work. They go back to traditional wage employment. However, because the data are often really hard to capture, we don't focus on these transitions. There's actually only a couple of papers that are ever even thought about the question. So I have this field experiment that looks at using an audit study when founders go back to work, what happens to these founders in terms of getting hired. So in this paper, we've actually partnered with LinkedIn to get all of LinkedIn's data to actually identify individuals who worked at a firm, became an entrepreneur, and then you know, go back to the workforce. But how is this experience like evaluated? If we think about working at the traditional firm, working at your new firm, what happens to you? So one of the real challenges here is how do we actually think about your career advancement or regression, right? Uh, if you've worked at any organization or have used organizational data, a software engineer at Google is different than what a software engineer might mean at Meta or pick your other firm, right? We use these titles. People kind of make up their own titles on LinkedIn as well. So it's really, really hard. So LinkedIn actually uses an algorithm on all of our data to try to classify us into one of these four buckets. And we're using these data to see for those who leave entrepreneurship, where do they fall from the bucket they were in to the bucket that they were going, right? So if you're in mid-level management as a pre-entrepreneur, if you become a senior manager, that's advancement. If you become a CXO, that's advancement. But if you go back to entry level, that's gonna be called a regression in our models. And this is the last slide, it's just the result here. So if you look at panel A here, this looks at CXO roles. So they can't advance, right? They've reached the top, so to speak. But what we find is that women are more likely to regress in their career if they were in a CXO role before entrepreneurship, whereas men are gonna be more likely to stay at the same level, right? So you're a CXO, you become an entrepreneur, you go back to traditional employment. We observe these people, women actually doing worse in their career if they were at a CXO role or a senior management role, right? So entrepreneurship is leading to career regression. And when we look at more lower level roles in terms of advancement, men are more likely to advance. So men who are in former entry level positions after entrepreneurship, they go to mid-level or senior level positions, whereas women are more likely to stay the same. And in the paper, we, uh, I call it a paper, it's, we've got words on the page, we're writing it. Uh, we explore lots of different explanations about how we think about this evaluation in terms of the venture's quality, venture growth, how many people you employed, what industry you're in, the gender composition of the firm you're going to, the leadership that you're going to, to better understand why we're seeing women get a worse return to entrepreneurship than men. Uh, the one caveat I'll leave you with is that this is obviously not causal because people choose to use LinkedIn. We think it's pretty representative. Most of students I see are using LinkedIn, so I feel comfortable about that. But people who select into entrepreneurship might be different, so we're never gonna get at that part of the question. But conditional on actually following this path, we do see women actually getting a worse return, even those who are more successful, hire more people, um, and have more growth in their venture. So I'd uh, love to chat more about that, and thanks for bearing with the monologue and then the slides. Appreciate it.